and also to direct some movies, which I'm happy about. Go on, please, because you are really good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. So where are you from? Vivienne, Le Coudy. It's a very long story. I have plenty of time. Let's begin with the ending. The ending is really beautiful. It made me think at first um, about Truffaut. Uh, but then uh, when you say this is um, the end of this world, uh, I thought this has so many meanings. Hmm. What did you mean, the ending of United States, the ending of Western, the ending of modern, of, of cinema studios, the ending of what? <laughs> well, it's interesting. Everybody that sees the movie, it becomes their movie, and I like this. You know, I make the movie a certain way, the way I want to, hopefully. In this case, yes, I'm very happy with it. And then when you show it to someone, <clears throat> one person or a big audience, they have different ways of seeing things, and I like this, that it becomes their movie. They sometimes, like you just did, you, they, they have reactions that surprise me, or well, maybe it's true, maybe it's about that, but for me simply it was about uh, the father in this moment saying, thinking back about his life with Vivienne, and, uh, and now it's a new chapter for him and the boy. We'll see what happens. I like stories where at the end, if you're interested in the story until the end, then you ask yourself, now what? Those are the stories I like. And of course, it's hopeful, but it's also sad because he's thinking about her, obviously. And the audience is probably remembering her life from a little girl all the way to the end. And speaking about her, she's the true um, protagonist of the movie, and it's beautiful because in Western we, we don't see so many um, female protagonists. Mm -hmm. And and I, I'm just going to say a sad thing, but sometimes in Italy uh, we 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 see under our reviews that if the ma the main character is a woman, male audience can't empathize with her, can't relate to her. Maybe they can with a green alien, but not with a woman. It's mm. really sad. It's not everybody, but mm. it's a real thing. So what would you say to those people? Mm, it's just a question of what you're accustomed to, you know. Obviously in the history of Westerns, there have probably been almost 8,000 Westerns made since the beginning. And like in most genres, most of them are not very original stories. And in the case of Westerns, it's true, you almost never have the lead role being played by a woman. <clears throat> and when you do, she's normally extraordinary. Extraordinarily evil, or violent, or usually powerful, owns big ranches, like some movies you can see from the 50s with Barbara Stanwyck, you know, where she's the main character. But normally you don't have a woman in the lead, it's true. And I think it's just a question of seeing it more and being accustomed to, to this. And also the story in the time of the 19th century in the West, there were probably a lot of women like Vivienne. There had to be. Who's taking care of the house? Who's taking care of the town? Who's keeping society together? It's the women when the men go away you know, to war and for their adventures. But journalists and novelists weren't interested in telling these stories and then when they made, started making movie stories they did the same thing. They weren't interested in these normal women, uh, average women, which is what Vivienne is. She has extraordinary interior strength and courage but she's a normal woman in many ways and uh, I was just curious what happens to little girls and women when they're fathers or brothers or sons go away to war, you know, what happens to them and what do they do? So I thought, well, if I want to see this, I should, I probably have to write it and do it myself. The villain of the movie, it's awful, but the thing that really uh, impressed me the most is that he constantly tries to broke the spirit of everybody, of uh, Vivienne, of the piano player, hmm. of the Mexican children. Uh, and when she, especially, she, she isn't broken, 
maybe yes, of course, but she's not a victim. She she stands up to, to him. He's so surprised. So do you really believe that art, cinema, a movie like this can really uh, make up our spirit, make our spirit strong? Art can do that? Yeah, I think so. I think movies and before that, books or oral stories centuries ago give us examples, mm. uh, archetypes that we can maybe admire or try to be like them and so forth. And I don't know, you know. Uh, but for women, the reactions I've had from audiences, they've, they've really liked this character. And Vicky Creeps, of course, does a great job. You really believe it's a real person. And I think even though she's not going to overpower these men physically, it's not a superhero movie, you know, mm, yeah. or an exploitation movie where she gets a gun and shoots all the bad guys. You know, that's a different kind of movie. Even though she can't overpower the bad guy physically, really her character is the strongest person in the movie, psychologically. She's stronger than Olsen, my character. She's stronger than Weston, this bad guy. She's stronger than everyone inside, you know. And you see this from when she's a child, when she's a little girl, and looking up to Joan of Arc, and she's a very free, very strong person, emotionally, psychologically, but also sensitive and vulnerable. She's a very complete person, very strong. And last question I have to ask. I don't want to know the story because you, you said it many times. In the beginning of the movie, we have the Aragorn sword. And, and, and when you, you shoot Lord of the Rings, you, you were on set constantly. With, you carried this sword always with you. They say that you almost eat with your sword. <laughs> Now there's a, a tiny, tiny reference because the sword is there mm. for a few seconds. I want to know. How your relationship with cinema changed since then? Because you now are a director, you compose music, you are also a photographer. Uh, how changed your, your relationship with cinema from those times to this? My relationship with cinema changed after The Lord of the Rings, like it did for everyone, all the actors in the movie and also the people in the crew, in that I had more opportunities. Anytime a movie becomes a, a big success, with the audiences and, and in the case of Lord of the Rings becomes sort of a cultural phenomenon around the world, then you get more options. Uh, I can't say yes to a job, but I can say no. I always could do that. Uh, I just have more options to say yes or not to. Uh, so I'm very happy about that. It gave me the opportunity to work with very good directors in the past 20 years and, uh, and also to direct some movies. I'm happy about. Go on, please, because you are really good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.